Yo, what the hell is going on, cool kids? I'm the Cool Kid Collector, and I got my second ever Freight Crate. This is from March 2018. I, I'm going to try to make this super quick. Um, the first thing that I always notice is the, is the quotes. I think that's so cool, man. Always make the audience suffer as much as possible. Alfred Hitchcock. I think that's very clever and a very unique thing that they do. Might seem stupid to you, even though it's just a sticker on the outside of the box and it gets thrown away. I think I just love seeing it. It's cool. Uh, this is my second one ever. Uh, I ditched all the other uh, mystery boxes. Uh, this is the company that I'm going to go with from now on. So I'm excited to get this. The first thing I have, I already opened this up earlier. I wasn't even going to do an unboxing video because I'm always so damn late to the party. But that's okay. I like to make an entrance. This t-shirt is the coolest fucking t-shirt I own right now. This is by far my favorite t-shirt, and I have hundreds of fucking t-shirts, and they're all the same color. But I love how it says 10 cents up here. It just gives you the old uh, vintage feel of like a comic book or a uh, old magazine. But I, I fucking love this shirt. This is such a kick-ass t-shirt, man. I love it. It's my new favorite shirt. I absolutely love it. Love Tales from the Crypt. I used to watch it with my dad. Um, there's a book right here called Nightmares Unhinged, 20 Tales of Terror. I'm not much of a reader. In my free time, I don't like to read. Um, I hang out with my kids, and when they go to bed, I hang out and listen to music. So I probably won't get into this, but my wife was really excited to see this, and I'm going to give this to her, and she's going to read it. And I, I might read it too. I'm not going to say no. I'm really interested in this book, and it seems like a kick-ass book, but I probably... If I do read it, it won't be for a while, and it might be just a few pages at a time. Not much of a reader, dude. Um, this pin. You all know that I absolutely love pins. I didn't grow up with Little Monsters uh, the way a lot of people did. I was born in the 80s, but I was raised in the 90s. And I know you can go back, and you can watch a movie from the 20s if you want, but when I go back and watch uh, movies, Little Monster isn't one of them. Uh, but this is a kick-ass pin. Maurice. It's a really cool pin. I do dig this a lot. It's not going to go on my jacket, though. I'm going to give this to my brother, but don't tell him. Another thing um, is this patch. Uh, it's a like a, a replica, I guess you could say, um, of a Maurice's patch. I think that's cool. I'm going to give these to my brother, and I'm sure that he will put these on his riding vest. Um, he's got lots of cool pins and patches that I've given him. I'm sure he's really going to dig that because he's older than me. And he's actually the person who showed me the movie Little Monsters, so I think that he's, I think that he will dig these, and I'm, I'm definitely gonna give these to him, and I think he'll like it. Uh, the Serial Resin Company, Darren Mitchell, and Jay Stevens. This is like an exclusive uh, company that they started. I think, if I'm wrong, let me know. But people flip out over these figures, and I've seen some really kick-ass ones. To me, in my opinion, I don't like it. Only because I, I don't I don't mean to diss anybody's work, man. If you guys put hard work into this thing, then be proud of it. Don't let me fucking ruin your fucking your your thing. You know what I mean? Which I know you won't anyway. I know it won't hurt your feelings. I just want to give my honest opinion. The only reason why I don't like it, I love Cujo and all, but it just reminds me of like a knickknack that you can get from the dollar store because you can go pretty much anywhere and buy a Rottweiler one, a Schnauzer one, a Poodle one, a Yorkshire Terrier one, whatever you want. And you can buy one of these and you can paint red on it. So I don't really like it. I, I'm not interested in it. But I'm not going to let it take away from the coolness of it. That The fact that somebody made this. I hope you guys made it. I hope you didn't just go out and buy a bunch of fucking St. Bernard. Or whatever the fuck he was. And, and painted red on him. I hope you didn't do that. But if you did, whatever. Either way. Um, it's a Cujo, Cujo resin figure. My son saw it and he really liked it and he, he made him and his, his werewolf play with it. So I'm probably going to give this to my son so he can play with his werewolf and make him fight. Um, the autograph I think is funny. I think it's Tim Capillo. Capello. It could be Capello, but I know in Spanish when there's two L's it's usually a Y sound. Like Castle is Castillo. But anyway, it's the saxophone player in Lost Boys. And it's funny because like... For as little time that the man had on screen, everybody remembers a saxophone player. You know what I mean? So it's funny, and I would be a big fan of this if David wasn't in it. I think this character should not be here. I get it that it's an art print with the signature, and if I put this up, my buddies would be like, oh, that's a cool art print, and then they'd go to this and be like, oh, wow, whose signature is that? 
And then it would make a funny conversation, like, dude, it's a fucking saxophone player. Remember the saxophone player? It'd be funny. But I just think it's off-putting to have David in the foreground and him in the background. I would have much rather had, I would appreciate this more if it was just an 8x10 photograph of this guy or an art print of this guy. I think David should not be in the foreground at all. It's just, it doesn't make any fucking sense to me. But it's definitely cool, and I'm glad that they went out of their way to contact this person and, and get his autograph. I think it's awesome, but I'm also going to give this to my brother, I think. Um, but that is the Fright Crate. I want to do it quick, because uh, like I said, I'm late. But um, I am not going anywhere, Fright Crate. I will be here un until the long haul, or until I'm absolutely devastated and sick of the shit the way I was with all these other boxes. Except Horror Block. Bring Horror Block back, goddammit. But with Man Box, I just got sick of them. Even in their, their March box, or I'm sorry, their April box, I was interested in the franchises, but I'm just like, man, I just, I already know it's going to be some dumb shit, and I probably won't get it till fucking June. They don't even know when their March box is shipping out, but it's not about them. This is about Fright Crate. I love Fright Crate. This is only my second box, and I'm going to keep coming back to them. These guys are on point with their shipping. When they fucking tell you they're gonna, you're going to get it, this is when you're going to get it. And I, I, I'm not a fucking whiner about having late shit. I understand that shit can be late, but one cool thing about these dudes is I've never heard anybody complain about them being late. And like I said, it doesn't matter if they're late. To me, it's all about the anticipation of getting the product, and then when I get it, I can't wait to open it. And even if I don't like everything in the box, it was still fun to do, and it was still fun to show you guys. This shirt is fucking awesome. I feel like I paid $40 for a shirt and some gifts. So I'm happy with this box, and I can't wait to get my April one. Uh, come visit me in the Cool Kid Collector Club on Facebook. I will see you guys later.